And yet, I believe that if one man were to live out his life fully and completely, were to give form to every feeling, expression to every thought, reality to every dream, I believe the world would gain such a fresh impulse of joy that we would forget all of these maladies of medievalism and uh, return again to the Hellenic ideal. Or to something richer, finer than Hellenic ideal it may be. But the bravest man among us is afraid of himself. Mutilation of the savage has its tragic survival in this self-denial that mars our lives. We are punished for our refusals. Every impulse we strive to strangle broods in the mind and poisons us. The body sins just once. Then it is done with its sin, for action is a mode of purification. Nothing is left but the recollection of a pleasure or the uh, Luxury of a regret. <clears throat> Resist it and the soul grows sick with longing for what it's forbidden itself. With desire for what its monstrous laws have made monstrous and unlawful. It has been said that the great deeds of the mind stem from the head. Well, it is in the mind and only in the mind where the great sins of the world take place as well. And you, Mr. Gray. You with your rose-red youth and your rose-white boyhood. You yourself have passions that make you afraid. Thoughts that fill you with terror. Daydreams and sleeping dreams that might stain your cheek with shame. Scene. Thank you guys. That's Jack Does a Monologue. That was from uh, a picture of Dorian Gray, uh, written by, obviously, Oscar Wilde. That is the moment where Lord Henry Wotton kind of teases a Dorian Gray to the point where Dorian Gray has a moment, a moment where afterwards he proclaims that he wants his youth forever, and he winds up selling his soul. Uh, now, if anyone has a monologue that they think I should work on, Please feel free to uh, list it in the comments. I will see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, with another Jack Does a Monologue or song. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good night.